the stomach actually has a lot of functions. one of the functions of the stomach is to receive the bolus from what organ if you said esophagus you're correct once the bolus is in the stomach the stomach will digest it into something we call chyme bolus chyme food it's all the same thing the stomach is going to use both mechanical and chemical digestion to do this eventually the chyme needs to be sent to the next organ in the pathway which is if you said duodenum or small intestine you're correct the small intestine is going to complete the process of digestion and do almost all of the absorption of our nutrients. The stomach also releases hormones that regulate digestion, satiation, and hunger. The stomach also kills pathogens in food. The fluid inside of the stomach, which we call gastric juice, is very, very, very acidic. And very few organisms can live in an acidic environment. So whether it's a bacterium or a worm, right? the stomach acid will kill almost all the living organisms that enter with our food the stomach is basically a storage sack too you know as we're eating we don't want that food to pass directly into the small intestine it's going to get overwhelmed and we need some pre-digestion to occur so the stomach can act as a storage sack for food and while the food is in storage it, it's going to be doing quite a bit of digestion too the stomach is capable of stretching. There are like these little wrinkles when we look inside of a stomach, and those are called rugae. And basically, we can have the stomach expand and those rugae flatten out when we distend the stomach as it fills with food. Very little nutrient absorption occurs in the stomach, and that's a common misconception that students have. They think the stomach does a lot of the nutrient absorption, but that's not true. I mean, the stomach can do some nutrient absorption, especially water, but it doesn't really do that much. Like other layers of the gastrointestinal tract, the stomach wall has four layers. So these are the same four layers that we've discussed in a previous video. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can fill in one, two, three, and four. Once you think you have them, press play, come back, and we'll review. Number one is mucosa. 2 is submucosa, 3 is muscularis externa, and 4 is serosa. Now take a minute and see if you can label the picture too. Again, when you're ready, press play and we'll see if you got these correct. So the top question mark should be mucosa. Below that is going to be the submucosa. Below that, with all the muscle, is the muscularis externa. And then in the picture, the lowest image is going to be the serosa. We know the stomach has the same four layers to its wall as many of the other gastrointestinal tract organs. Let's look at some of the things that are different about the wall of the stomach that are really important for the stomach function. We're going to look at two specializations of the stomach wall, something involving the mucosa and then something involving the muscularis externa. First up is the mucosa. In terms of structure, don't forget the mucosa, mucosa has three layers to it, the epithelium, the lamina propria, and the muscularis mucosae. The only one that's really different here is the epithelium. The type of epithelial tissue that we're gonna find lining the stomach is simple columnar epithelial tissue. This epithelium will fold in places, forming things called gastric pits, also called gastric glands or stomach glands. There are lots of different cells that are embedded in that epithelium of the gastric gland. And let's take a look at those. One of the cell types that we're going to find here are mucus cells, sometimes called goblet cells. And of course, they produce mucus. And this mucus is really, really important for the stomach because the stomach needs to protect itself from self-digestion. If you think about it, that makes sense. The stomach is going to be putting acid into the gastric juice, which we'll talk about in a minute, and that acid can very easily eat away at the wall of the stomach itself, and it does. And there's a very high turnover rate in the, the epithelium of the stomach because of this. But we can do some things to mitigate that turnover rate, and one of them is to put a layer of mucus between the acid and the epithelium.
Also in the epithelium of the gastric glands are parietal cells. Parietal cells are gonna make two things that are important for the digestive system function. One is the acid. So the parietal cells are producing the hydrochloric acid that is a part of our gastric juice. And this acid is important because it helps to denature or unfold our macromolecules, especially proteins. And in order to digest a protein, you have to get it to unfold because the enzymes need to be able to access the protein. And if it's in a big glob, the enzymes can't get to the center of the glob. So the denaturation process unfolds the protein so that the enzymes can have access to all of the protein. And of course, as we discussed previously, this acid is also helpful for killing pathogens. Another thing produced by the parietal cells is intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is a compound that allows us to absorb vitamin B12. So there's this odd thing that happens. We can't really absorb vitamin B12 and we need it because vitamin B12 is important for a lot of different reactions that occur in the body, including the reactions important for urethropoiesis. So in order to absorb vitamin B12, it has to first combine with this intrinsic factor. The actual process of absorption won't occur until later in the small intestine. Something that might help you to remember the function of the parietal cells is to remember phi, P-H-I. So the P can stand for parietal cells, but P-H is the measure of the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution, and obviously we're going to have a lot of acid here, so the pH is also telling us that we're gonna make acid. So I said it was phi, so the I is obviously for intrinsic factor. Another cell that we find in the epithelium of the gastric gland are chief cells, and chief cells produce pepsinogen. Pepsinogen is a proenzyme, so this is basically something that will become an enzyme. The pepsinogen is released into the gastric juice and once it's in there, it's converted into something called pepsin. So the acid environment is what makes that conversion happen. The pepsin then is a really good protease, which is an enzyme that breaks down proteins. We also have stem cells located in the gastric glands, and these are there to make more gastric gland cells like chief cells and parietal cells. Another important cell type found in the epithelium are enteroendocrine cells. So entero is referring to digestive organs. Endocrine is hormone. So this is a cell associated with a digestive organ that's making a hormone. Or I should say cells, because there's more than one, right? One of the cell types that we're gonna learn about are G cells. So G cells are an enteroendocrine cell that produces a hormone called gastrin and gastrin is gonna help regulate gastric activity or stomach activity. Don't forget that hormones are released into the bloodstream. So a lot of students will improperly say that the gastrin is released into the gastric juice, but it's not. All, this, all these other things were released in the gastric juice, right? Hydrochloric acid, intrinsic factor, pepsin, mucus, that all is part of the gastric juice but the gastrin hormone is released into the bloodstream. The other specialization I wanted to talk about in the wall of the stomach is associated with the muscularis externa. In the muscularis externa, we have an extra layer of muscle. So typically in most areas of the digestive tract, we only see two layers of muscle in the externa, but here we have three layers of muscle, and that is just to help the the stomach do all of its fancy contractions that it does, all of this mixing action that allows us to get all of that acid around all of our food and get that denaturation process really going well. I've already talked about gastric juice, so this is just kind of a review, right? So gastric juice is the collective term for all of the gastric mucosal secretions that are put into the stomach lumen itself, right? So we know there's mucus, we know there's acid coming from our parietal cells. We know there's intrinsic factor coming from the parietal cells. Pepsin is coming from chief, chief cells, but the pepsin gets turned into pepsinogen once it's in the acid environment of the gastric juice. And there's other enzymes that I didn't mention that are being produced and put into the gastric juice too. Regulation of stomach activity does occur, and it is regulated by both the nervous system and the endocrine system.
but we're going to discuss regulation of gastric activity after we talk about the small intestine because it turns out the regulation of the stomach and the small intestines is very closely associated.